Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be taking a deep dive into lumber camps. If this topic sounds familiar, then it might be because this is a long overdue revisit and expansion of what was actually one of my first video attempts ever on the channel that I never thought I did particularly well. Of course, on top of that, everyone knows the optimal time to refresh your lumber camp videos is once every eight years. This time, we'll be touching on everything from how often is best to rebuild them, the degree that multiple villagers on the same camp impacts their efficiency, how to avoid getting lumberjacks trapped or idling, and end on the classic question of one lumber camp versus two in Dark Age to see how much of a difference it makes. Obviously, there's lots to look at, so let's get started. We'll begin with what generally happens with a lumber camp over time to develop some intuition and give a slightly different perspective than you're probably used to. Here I have five villagers working on a pretty nice wood line, when you might get on Michi or Black Forest for example. Obviously the longer I leave them chopping, the farther the wood line is pushed back, leading to inefficiency from all the extra walking. The first question I would pose to you then is how long do you think until the villagers lose, say, 10% of their efficiency? Is it immediate once the first row is cut, or does it take quite a long time? Now, first of all, the answer sort of depends on upgrades, as wheelbarrow and handcart can have an impact. Here I've given the villagers wheelbarrow and handcart as well as the first two wood upgrades. What I did next was look over the next hour and 15 minutes at how much wood had been dropped off at every minute, and we get this graph. Notice there's a slight curve to it, which simply reflects how over time our villagers are getting less efficient on this one camp. Now while the graph directly shows us the total wood collected at any given time, it doesn't tell us the collection rate. So we can't just look at this and know for example when our collection rate is down 10%. To figure that out, all we have to do is find a trend line and grab its equation, do a bit of simple high school calculus, and now we can find the lumberjack's rate at a given time just by plugging in some numbers. For example, from this we can work out our villagers right beside the lumber camp are collecting about 32 wood per minute, and likewise it tells us at this point shown we've lost 10% of our collection efficiency, which for context took our 5 villagers a little over 17 minutes to happen. Jumping ahead to 43 minutes, you might think this is an absolutely terrible looking wood line and be ashamed to ever see yours get this bad, yet maybe surprisingly it's only a 20% loss in efficiency. Again, handcart is helping out here by letting them move faster and carry more wood per trip, but these 5 villagers here are still working about as quickly as 4 right beside a camp, which is better than I thought they'd be doing. As one last example here an hour and 5 minutes into the test, these villagers are now 25% less efficient than they started. Notice the efficiency drops have slowed down quite a bit, as we lost 10% in the first 17 minutes, but only 5% in the most recent 22 minutes. This is basically because there are a lot more trees at this distance, so it takes longer for the villagers to work their way to the next row. Now I think we can all agree that this lumber camp should have been replaced long ago, so the next obvious question then is what's the optimal distance before refreshing your camps? It's appealing to assume that the more camps the better, but it's not quite that simple, as you have the build time to make a camp, which is 35 seconds a villager isn't otherwise working, plus the 100 wood cost of the camp. Now admittedly I'm not the first to investigate this, as I found 3 other YouTubers at least who have done a similar test, but I do like to confirm things myself when possible. To find the optimal refresh time, we're going to run a series of tests. On one extreme we're going to have blue, which is just a baseline where I don't build any additional lumber camps. And on the other extreme we have Orange, who's going to replace their camp every time they're able. The flags here are just outlining for me where to put the next camps, in case you're curious. In contrast, for Purple it's a similar idea, but there'll be a 1 tile gap between the camps, and then the same thing with a 2 tile gap for Cyan, 3 for Yellow, 4 for Green, and a 5 tile gap for Red. What we'd be expecting to see is that the extremes do quite poorly, but that there's a magic sweet spot that ends up balancing the cost of new camps with keeping a certain level of efficiency. I ran the test for 90 minutes in game, pausing every minute to evaluate whether any camps need to be rebuilt and tracked how much wood each of the players had at that minute, which I personally like better than how much wood they collected since it captures the cost of the lumber camps and we are factoring that in. Doing it this way also gives us an idea of what's happening over time, instead of just the final result. So what did we find? Coming in as the worst was obviously not replacing camps for 90 minutes, and there was then a steady improvement seen by adding more camps right up until the end. As others have found, the best results were when leaving a one tile gap between your camps, or in other words placing a new one when the wood line has moved three tiles ahead. Admittedly, this is significantly more often than I had concluded in my first stab at the topic in 2015. That said, there are a few things to highlight here. 
First of all, the differences here are relatively modest. And for example, the difference between the ideal one tile gap and yellow's three tile gap is a drop of only about two and a half percent. The other important caveat is that while a one tile gap is eventually the best if we look just at the final total, there are many points along the way that it's not. To see what I mean, let's take a look at where things are 20 minutes into the test. At this point, purple and cyan have built a new camp, whereas yellow, green, and red have not. And at this point in time, the new camp has not paid for itself. So in fact, purple and cyan are behind in wood, despite doing the theoretically optimal strategy. Likewise, we can jump ahead to 30 minutes of chopping, and purple using the quote, ideal distance, is only 20 wood ahead of green, who has been far less meticulous about camp placement. This is an idea that we'll come back to when we get to the one versus two lumber camps in Dark Age debate. Though the big conclusion here again is just that a one tile gap is eventually the best, even if there are various points along the way that you're temporarily behind. Now that we've started though, there's actually a lot of other interesting lumber camp questions. The next that jumps to mind is how multiple villagers on one camp can impact all of their efficiency. To get at this one, I grabbed copies of the same small tree patch and chopped it with everything from 3 to 10 villagers. Of course, the more villagers, the faster it will be cut in an absolute sense, but if villager bumping is a big deal, then their average collection rate should slow down as more added. And that's exactly what we see in a very clear pattern. This is something we'll come back to again, and the non-zero access is exaggerating the difference here, but going with 10 villagers versus 5 per lumber camp in this case dropped their collection rate by about 4%. This backs the general rule of trying to have between 4 and 6 villagers around each camp if possible. This was one mistake I made in the original video on this topic, as the main test I did back then was done with 15 villagers to speed things up, while not considering how having that many villagers bunched up would slow them down and make replacing camps look worse than it is. Another lumber related question is how many villagers should physically be involved in rebuilding the camp itself? There isn't necessarily a perfect answer here, but consider the fact it takes one villager 35 seconds to build or six villagers 13 seconds to build. More villagers will get your camp up faster, but are overall less efficient if we turn all of it into villager seconds. In fact, using six builders equates to about 20 lost wood compared to just having one do it, and that's not including any walking time. Especially on a large scale, just having a few villagers make new camps rather than everyone is gonna be more efficient and generally cleaner. Now, that said, there is one caveat though, which is one of a couple of lumberjack bugs. One thing I have noticed is if you place a camp on top of other lumberjacks that are actually working, then they'll sometimes go idle. Trying to avoid this would actually be a reasonable counter argument in favor of instead grabbing lots of villagers to rebuild camps in an area. The same sort of bug can also show up if you try to wall a lumberjack into a small nook behind your lumber camp. Admittedly, it feels pretty clever, like you're keeping the villagers safe from scouts and men-at-arms and giving it extra efficiency. But when the camp is built, if they try to target a tree that they can't reach, then instead they'll just stand there and do nothing. It's not the end of the world, but is something to keep an eye on if you're going to use this trick. Another related idea that I'm sure we're all familiar with is trapped villagers, where they seem to get stuck between existing ones and at least temporarily stop working. In my experience, I found this happens almost exclusively when villagers are trying to chop wood directly behind a camp, which can either lead to three all being on the same tile and squishing the one in the middle, or another case is there's a path chop beside the camp as shown here. The general problem is just too many lumberjacks on one side of the camp, and this tends to only happen when you have three or more, but it's also exacerbated by having one of them trying to chop again wood directly behind the camp. Personally, I used to be a big fan of having villagers target that spot directly as it felt very efficient, but I've started avoiding that now that I've noticed how much more often it leads to trap villagers, and it's just something to be aware of. Now, all of this talk about trap villagers might lead you to wonder if it's instead better to leave a one tile gap with camps that you build rather than put them right against the wood line. While admittedly that does solve the problem of trap villagers, it's generally considered incorrect, but of course we have to investigate further. Here I have six villagers and we're going to chop this moderately sized tree patch. I'm going to do it three times, once building right against the tree line like usual and adding a new camp every time we can place one with a one tile gap, which as we saw is the best over the long run, though it can lead to trap villagers at least temporarily. I'll then do the test again, but this time placing camps so as to always leave a one tile gap between the camp and wood line where it's built, eliminating the risk of trap villagers and making the pathing a little bit easier. Third, while doing that test, I anticipated questions about making the maximum number of camps, but this time leaving the one tile gap between the tree line, as it started to feel at times in the second test like it was quite a long ways that the villagers were walking. 
After chopping the entire patch all three times, the results completely supported conventional thinking, with putting the camps directly against the wood line doing the best, followed in second by leaving a one tile gap, which dropped the efficiency by about 4%. Finally, the worst of the three options was of course adding a lot of camps, which as we already saw is not an optimal strategy. The point is, even if it does lead to slightly more trapped villagers, putting your camps right against the woodline is going to cut down on walking time, which overall makes it more efficient. Now finally, I wanted to address the question of whether to build one lumber camp in Dark Age or if you should make two. In some hyper-aggressive builds, you'll see players elect for just one, with the obvious advantage of saving 100 wood, but with the trade-off of course, as we've already seen, being they're probably less efficient overall. Out of interest, and because it ties in with a few ideas we've already seen, I wanted to try to quantify that trade-off, and how much wood you're either ahead or behind by splitting your lumberjacks between two camps. To try to model a realistic situation, I'm going to use the classic 21 population scout rush build order. In that, villagers 7, 8, and 9 go on wood after your first 6 on sheep, and then typically your last 3 villagers made in Dark Age are sent to wood, followed by 4 being moved from sheep to wood as you click up, ending with 10 on wood in total. You then pick up double bit axe immediately in Feudal Age, and typically stay with those 10 on wood throughout, not including any straggler trees. First, I tried that with one lumber camp, tracking how much wood I'd accumulated over time, leading to, of course, 10 villagers on a single camp while advancing and during Feudal Age. I then repeated the same test on the same map, with the first three on one camp, the next three on a second camp, and the last four villagers being split. So you end up with five lumberjacks or lumberjills on each camp, and again track the total wood I had every minute. So let's look at the results. Probably as you'd expect, staying on one lumber camp has a big advantage after seven minutes in game, going by the F11 timer, since you're saving 100 wood. Though surprisingly for me, it actually maintained an edge until 14 minutes, which is often well into feudal age if you're going scouts. After that point, the better efficiency of two camps does start to pull ahead, though not by a lot until 17 minutes and later, when it's passing around a 50 wood advantage. From this, you can definitely see why some hyper-aggressive build orders call for just one camp, as at 9 or 10 minutes in game, you're still about 80 or 90 wood ahead. While the basic idea of staying on one camp is pretty intuitive, if anything, I was just surprised it took until the 17th or 18th minute in game to see two camps pay off. Of course, splitting has other benefits, like a bit of extra safety from towers, etc., and two Dark Age camps is generally viewed as best practice by default. So that was a whole lot of Lumberjack questions, and hopefully there was at least one interesting takeaway for you in that pile. Shout out to Seb, Woodruff, John, Jockster, Justin, James, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their awesome support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.